Good evening. Good evening. I always think it's on, and then it's not. You can hear me fine. Eh, yep, it's on. Okay. I don't know. The light back there is not working. Today we begin what's called the Three Holy Days, or the, if you prefer Latin, I know you do, uh, the Triduum. All right. And the three services primarily are today, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday afternoon, the chief service, and then Saturday evening, the Easter vigil. And we have two other services in between, Friday night, the service of darkness, and then uh, Saturday morning, there's a prayer service at 9 o'clock, our congregation of prayer. These services, they don't actually end. <laughs> so tonight, there won't be a benediction. We end with the stripping of the altar, which if you've been here on Monday, Thursday, you've seen before. Uh, and then, actually, when we start up tomorrow afternoon, there will be no invocation. We'll just go right into the service, as if you never left. <laughs> but, of course, you're going to go home in between. Uh, I will, too. All right. So they're meant to all go together, these services. Uh, they have different themes, and they all collectively then teach us about our Lord's work uh, to save us by his dying for us. So let's begin this evening with a hymn of invocation. When you woke that Thursday morning, hymn 400. 45.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. It is fitting on this evening that our Lord instituted his supper, that we examine ourselves by the questions Luther prepared, the Christian questions and their answers. Do you believe that you are a sinner? Yes, I believe I am How do you know this? Are you sorry for your sins? Yes, I am sorry that I have sinned against God. What have you deserved from God because of your sins? Do you hope to be saved? Yes, that is my hope. In whom then do you trust? In my dear Lord Jesus Christ. Who is Christ? The Son of God, true God and man. How many gods are there? What has Christ done for you that you trust in him? Did the Father also die for you? He did not. The Father is God only. That is the Holy Spirit. But the Son is God and the man. He died for me and shed his blood for me. How do you know this? What are the words of institution? Do you believe, then, that the true body and blood of Christ are in the sacrament? Yes, I believe it. What convinces you to believe this? What should we do when we eat his body and drink his blood, and in this way receive his pledge? Why should we remember and proclaim his death? What motivated Christ to die and make full payment for your sins? His great love for his Father and for me and other sinners, as it is written on the John 14, Romans 5, Galatians 2, and Ephesians 5. Finally, why do you wish to go to the sacrament?
What should admonish and encourage a Christian to receive the sacrament frequently? But what should you do if you are not aware of this need and have no hunger and thirst for the sacrament? To Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In him his salvation, life, and resurrection from the dead. By him we are redeemed and set at liberty. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in him is salvation, life, and resurrection from the dead. By him we are redeemed and set at liberty. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, 
that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Holy Thursday is from Exodus chapter 24. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the just decrees. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the uh, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord.
The epistles from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread and, or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. We stand for the gospel. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. My flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of the, this world to the Father, and having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. 
For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess together by the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, the God of the Father before all worlds, God of Begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things 
In the holy name of Jesus, amen. amen. This is my body given for you. This is the basis for our public confession as Christians. This is my body given for you. But it's also the centerpiece of just about every controversy in Christian churches, even today. At the heart of this confession is the belief that apart from the man Jesus, there is no God. Any departure from this confession buries faith in Christ under one kind of excuse or another. This is my body given for you. Now, you believe it, but it's not easy to believe. And as always, sometimes, well, I should say always, God's Word, well, we want to keep it a safe distance because we want to keep God at a safe distance. We want our own time to choose our own path. We want freedom to think and to imagine what we think is best for us. What you don't want is God coming and crashing your party, sitting himself down on the altar and demanding that you pay attention and listen to him. Jesus orders everything in the Christian church so that everyone daily obtain here nothing but the forgiveness of sin through the word and sacraments to comfort and encourage our consciences as long as we live here. The practice of the Lord's Supper is clear. You know what it is, the body and blood of Christ under bread and wine. You know the benefit it gives for the forgiveness of sins. You even know who is to receive it rightly. What is worthy reception? Those who have faith in these words. But you don't even take him at his word. Jesus says, given and shed For you all, you plural. But then, as I said, Jesus' word, we want to keep at a distance. So we have to put conditions or qualifications on those clear, direct words. It goes one of two different ways. On the one hand, maybe you'd like to have your friends or your family or neighbors commune without confessing the same faith as this congregation, having been instructed and examined by the pastor contradicting 1 Corinthians 11 and our confessions. That's not taking Jesus at his word. So you'd have some receive the sacrament outside of faith and to their judgment. But on the other hand, you won't have your children commune who confess the faith and are easily examined, who come to the altar and ask for it, thereby disregarding, again, the words of institution recorded by the Gospels and from St. Paul. You'd have the little ones who believe and desire to receive forgiveness, according to Jesus' own word, be denied that gift for all sorts of imaginary reasons. And it's not just that. Listen to what our actual confessions say. This is Luther in the large catechism. Let this serve as an exhortation then, not only for us who are grown and advanced in years, which is most of us in the room, but also for the young people who ought to be brought up in the Christian doctrine and a right understanding of it. With such training, we may more easily instill the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and the Lord's Prayer into the young so that they will receive them with joy and earnestness, practice them from their youth, and become accustomed to them. Some of you joined us this week for the congregation of prayer here in person. You got to witness how readily the children of our day school receive the traditions, the Word of God, the creeds, confessions, the prayers. Even we have, a, I think, a three-year-old that knows the Apostles' Creed by heart. Incredible. Says it every day. Luther continues, Let every head of a household remember that it is his duty by God's injunction and command to teach or to have taught to his children the things they ought to know. And since they are baptized and received into the Christian church, 
they should also enjoy the fellowship of the sacrament of the altar, so that they may serve us and be useful. For they must all help us to believe, to love, to pray, and to fight the devil. That's right. Luther invites the children to the sacrament in our own confession, the large catechism, and he even says it's good for us because then they can stand alongside us to help us believe, to love, to pray, and to fight the devil. <laughs> so, Jesus' word was clear. We add our own conditions, we add our own qualifications to those words to our detriment. And so you've got it upside down and backward. Sometimes you don't even know what you're doing. It's out of ignorance. And you don't want to know so long as you're left alone to make your own decisions, to go about things your own way. How this usually goes is you fall back on, again, traditions or on culture or upon the ever-favorite, well, we've or I've always done it this way. But I think on the night that our Lord instituted the sacrament, it's a good night to remember that we just should take Jesus at his word. Just be faithful to Jesus and his word. It's really silly and childish to follow our own heart's imagination, especially in regards to the gifts of God. When you have God's word accessible to you everywhere you go. And are you so bold to tell the Lord's preacher that you know what's best? Or maybe you'll stop your ears so that you can't hear these words. You're already offended and now you're done listening. <laughs> and maybe you'll just slip out the back tonight rather than confront the reality of what Jesus says. Take, eat, take, drink. Now this is not just with the sacrament of the altar. It's actually how all sin goes. This is what it means to confess that sin makes you stupid. That's Luther. So stupid that you think that these tactics of running away or stopping your ears or just not listening is going to work. You think that you can tell Jesus how to be Jesus. And how absurd is that? Did you die for the sins of the world? You do not need more freedom to make your own choices. You just need Jesus to tear out that stony heart that won't listen to him and to give you a beating heart of flesh made alive by Jesus' word and spirit. So, again, this is my body given for you is the public confession of the Christian. Because God is only present for you where Jesus' body is presented to you. God go goes so deep into the flesh that he gives his weight to sinful men and women, boys and girls, with such reckless, loving abandon that maybe you're even a bit embarrassed for him. His love is so great that he lays down his life for you, offering the divine love and life to even the likes of, well, sinful, stupid people. He lays his body and blood down on the altar tonight abundantly and without a hint of frugality for you as your manna in this wilderness of sin or perhaps as your Passover lamb roasted over the fire of God's wrath, giving you escape from the bondage of sin of Egypt. When Jesus comes and dresses himself up in the words of his preacher, he is really and truly present for you in the flesh. The salvation he offers is not an opportunity for you to fly away from reality or to make up a new reality as you would rather have it, but instead to become really and fully his trusting creature in Christ's new kingdom. That's why he preaches to you, so that you aren't left to speculate and wonder about what's going on here tonight. Salvation in Christ means receiving everything in creation from God through trusting his promises day by day. And of course, he even uses the stuff of creation, water, bread, and wine, a sinful man's voice, to commune with you so that you are again and again forgiven, enlivened, and made hopeful again. And the God and man are so closely mixed that they have penetrated each other in Jesus. So now you cannot even know God without staring 
are starting with Jesus. Likewise, you can't know Jesus without starting with God. There's no knowledge of God apart from Jesus. You can't know God's love apart from Jesus' way of giving love. No greater love than this, that one man lay down his life for his friends. Everything that God is for you is right here with Jesus. Your creator, eternal, unthwartable in his decisions, electing and kind. And this God is so deep into human flesh that when he comes to sit down on earth, he's not going anywhere else except for this altar. And he refuses to be moved out of the way. He's telling you tonight right where you can always find him. Take and eat. Take and drink. And really, you have no other God than this particular man, Jesus, given and shed for you. You're stuck with him in the way that he chooses to give himself. Even if he doesn't quite appeal to your religious fantasies of a God who somehow includes you in all of his decisions or is present for everyone everywhere at all times, wherever and whenever they choose to go looking for him. That's not what he says. He doesn't conform to your ideas of what is acceptable, traditional, appropriate. He doesn't wait for you to understand or to figure it all out. He just speaks to you. And you hear him. And the Spirit gives faith when and where he wills. So tonight, when you hear the words of institution again for the third time, listen real close given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. That's Jesus' way of saying, I love you, and you, and you, and you, (laughs) and I'm right here for you tonight. You can almost hear him say, no one can separate you from me, not now, not ever, not even over my dead body. In the name of Jesus, amen. We stand to sing. Let us pray. O God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that we turn from our evil way and live. We come before you, although we have sinned and deserve only your wrath. Yet we flee to your mercy in Christ Jesus our Lord, who gave his body and his blood for our redemption. Lord, grant that we may ever thus believe and never waver. Grant that in such faith we may worthily come to your altar to eat the very body and drink the true blood which your Son has given for our redemption. In thanksgiving, we remember and proclaim the sufferings and death of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we place our trust. Until his return, graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, One God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly me, trite and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, O Holy, O Holy, Holy Lord God of Salvation, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, come on.
sing the Nook Dimittis. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Amen.
lay me in the dust of death. For the dogs who compass me, accompany a people who worship the servants me. The air pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones, they stare and gloat over me. They glide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far off, O oh, you my help. Come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him, and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised for the Lord the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who see him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember. 